Yo, what's going on, my people? Welcome back to the Live Capital YouTube channel where life is for the taking. Now, I'm going to be giving you guys a full on illustration of the US debt. You're also going to have a clearer understanding of how trade and global trade is affected. And as well, let's talk about these inflows, y'all. It's a good one. Let's get into it. Yo, so like I said, my people, we're actually in a bit of a uh, decline, 1%, 2% decline over the last day. Right now, your Bitcoin is right here at 23.2. Your Ethereum's right here at 16. And as well, you could see that USDC is not on its peg, but they're saying the tether is. Let's go ahead and see who's actually done something in the last 24 hours. Chili's right here, guys, is pretty good. That's going to be your sports utility token. Also, as well, linked with Barcelona. Gala Gamings. Gala Gamings is one we've mentioned previously before. Up 6% in the last 24 hours. And as well, Chili's was up 14%, and you have Cello here at you know around 4%, but 22% on the week. Keep that in mind, guys. They have a bridge right here that's going to be connecting those central bank digital currencies completely to your mobile phone. Now, with that being said, guys, there is a link in the description. Okay, when it comes down to getting your coins off of the exchange, is very important. So one of our sponsors over here is decent, just to give you guys an overview of what's going on in July. Pretty much putting it out there that Decent Wallet was supporting those QR based protocols that were linked to your MetaMask. So now you can connect your Decent Wallet with the MetaMask extension using the QR code protocol. And as well, the Decent Wallet has joined forces with the one inch DEX aggregator, guys. Really important, of course, for our ETH holders out there. You can connect your uh, Decent Wallet, of course, for a built in swap right there on one inch. And as well, the Cosmos Atom network is now integrated with the Decent Wallet. That means uh, the Cosmos network. Uh, can be integrated there. So obviously you can now easily add and manage your Atom assets on your decent wallet. And as well, the Phantom Network was added uh, for a built in swap on your uh, decent powered by one inch. Now, moving forward right here, guys, I want you to uh, hear this. There's been a few questions. Of course, some people have been wondering, well, if there is a private ledger over there for XRP, that must be where it's you know, more expensive. If we have two different public and private ledgers going on for those CBDCs, is it possible XRP could be a different price? Listen to this. Ah, sorry, y'all. One second. Check this out. When I don't know if this makes sense, but uh, the question is, will the value of XRP be the same on the in the private ledgers as it is on the public? Yes. The value proposition of XRP is that it has this these liquidity pools. It, it, if it doesn't make sense to isolate something, like there's no place where gold is worth twice as much as it is now, because if there was, people would just bring gold there and they would write and they would push the, they would buy gold somewhere else and they would sell it there. Um, unless the only way that you can have the value be very different in two places is if there's a lot of friction. And if there's friction, someone will make a business of removing that friction. So I don't see any realistic scenario where XRP has significantly different value unless something's wrong. Like a good example of a case, there was a time where the value of XRP, in, they called it the kimchi premium, right? Where the value of XRP in some Asian countries was very high, but that was because there were capital controls, right? That was because things were bad. Um, I think that's a sign that something is not going well. The value proposition of XRP is that you can take it to all of the places, right? If I sell you some gold and you say, hey, this gold can only be used in jewelry, you're like, well, that kind of sucks. I don't want that gold, right? The value proposition of gold is that you have access to the entire value proposition of gold. And so I don't, I don't see any scenario in which pieces where it makes sense to snip pieces off again, unless something is wrong. So again, the question that is asked, will the value of XRP be the same on the private ledger as it is on the public ledger? David's answer is yes. Now, if you've been wondering a few different places where you can get yourself some XRP, of course, if you don't want to deal with the exchanges, for example, if you have, uh, let's just say you're trying to get rid of some ETH, yeah, like 0.2 of some ETH, you could swap that out right now for 860 XRP. So it's a great thing. There is a link in the description, guys. Definitely utilize it. You could benefit. Now, right here, like we were talking about with these inflows coming in from the capital market, inflows into crypto's investment products continue to pour in for the fifth consecutive week. Despite the extended bear market, the capital inflow into cryptocurrency investment products has continued to soar as the sector makes attempts to sustain the recent short term gains. The uptick of capital into the market suggests that investors remain supportive of cryptocurrency despite the sustained sell off for the last week. In July, the crypto investment products recorded the fifth straight week of capital inflows at 81 million. This data was published on August 1st today. Over the five weeks, the investment products have, reco have recorded inflows 
of 0.53 billion with July alone, attracting $474 million in capital, notably the figures in contrary to June's outflow of 481. So get that, guys. It continues to flow, as you guys could see here, the weekly crypto asset flows. Leave you guys a link for that. Now, check this out. This is uh, what the IMF has tweeted. The global economic, the global economy is slowly sharpening, is slowing sharply. The war in Ukraine, rising energy and food prices and supply demand imbalances are feeding worldwide inflation. Look at what they have to say, y'all. Yeah, guys, don't forget, they've also suggested that we should not have private car ownership. All right. So the IMF is telling you that they plan on lowering inflation by tightening monetary policy. Now, of course, over here for some more tightening restrictions on cash payments in Israel has prompted a shift to digital payments. According to a statement by Israel, by Israel's tax authority, the change aims to combat organized crime, money laundering and noncompliance with tax laws. The new regulation specifies that it would be unlawful to pay firms more than seventeen hundred in cash. Unlawful. Payments beyond the limit must be made in alternative ways, including debits or digital payment transfer mechanisms. I think personally speaking, I think we're going to be seeing a lot more of these shifts happening because remember, we could just deem it under the guises of organized crime, money laundering and noncompliance. I'll leave you guys a link for that. Right here, Michael Crypto, give the guy a follow. He's really good at giving out some real ISO 222 related cryptocurrency uh, information. The UK has proposed changes to property, personal property laws around digital assets. Listen to this, y'all. UK proposes changes to personal property laws around digital assets. The Law Commission of England and Wales has published a consultation paper on proposed reforms to the law surrounding digital assets, including determining ownership. With the expansion of the metaverse, blockchain technology, and increasing use of cryptocurrency and NFTs, the law must be updated to account for their unique characteristics. You see that? More and more expansion, more and more awareness of your metaverse, blockchain, and of course, NFTs. These recommendations will adapt the law to these new technologies and protect its users. It's hoping they will help the UK become the global hub for digital assets. Keep that in mind in the next two to three years. OK, the UK, the Eurozone, they're all coming about to this new ISO 222 standard. I'll leave you guys a link now. Uh, good stuff. Uh, this is out from Andy. He was saying the U.S. debt is spiraling out of control. Only gold, silver and copper are legal currency. All fiat currencies throughout history have failed. Gold and silver never. XRP will not fail either. I'm going to be showing you guys a visual right here. Um, you know, big shout to demonocracy.info but they really put a, a good visualizer so you guys can really see what's happening with the u.s debt the u.s debt visualized in a hundred dollar bills right here as you guys can see here one the hundred a hundred dollar bill the most counterfeited money denomination in the world keeps the world moving right this is going to be your ten thousand dollars enough for a great vacation buy a used car approximately one year of work for the average human on earth right here, the average human on earth works a year for this, for this. 
All right, so right here, a million dollars, not as big as apology thought. Still, this is 92 years of work for the average human on Earth. 92, 92. All right, so you move that right here to $100 million. Plenty, plenty to go around for everyone. Fits nicely on an ISO military standard size palette. The couch is made of $46.7 million of crispy $100 bills, as you guys can see there. Now let's bump this on up. $100 million equals one year of work for 3,500 average Americans. As you guys could see here, let's check a look at a billion. A billion, you'll need some help when robbing the bank. Interesting fact, $1 million weighs 10 kilograms exactly. We're looking at 10 tons of money on those pallets. A billion dollars is 10 tons of money. 10 tons. Let's go ahead and look at a trillion. Yeah. A trillion. If you spend a million dollars a day since Jesus was born, you would not have spent one trillion dollars by now. But seven hundred billion dollars is the same amount the banks got during bailouts. Look at that. Look at that. You see, you have the whole White House right here. Jumbo jet. All that. Now that's money. That's one trillion dollars. Comparison to a standard American football field. Say hello to the Boeing 747 that's hiding in the back. This was until the biggest passenger chain. Uh, but you can see the White House uh, on the right. Now, let's see the U.S. debt in 2022. 30 plus trillion dollars. 30 plus trillion dollars. This is the debt. This is the U.S. debt. Uh-huh. Statue of Liberty seems rather worried as the United States national debt is soon to pass 40% of the entire world's combined economy. Here are some cool quotes from the founding fathers over 200 years saying the right thing about the future and in a sense predicting, I place economy among the first and most important virtues and public debt as the greatest danger to be feared. To preserve our independence, we must not let our rulers load us with perpetual debt. If we run into such debt, we must be taxed. We must be taxed in our meat and drink, in our, in our necessities and in our comforts, in our labor and in our amusements. This is from Thomas Jefferson himself. And clearly you guys could see that. I'll leave you guys a link for uh, how that all works out. Now for my main piece here, my people uh, putting it out there. There's been a lot of uh, FUD, a lot of confusion out of the XDC network or out of the XDC community. And we really wanted to just clear this up. So Walter Blueway, uh, he's one of the uh, tech team members over in the XDC Foundation. He really put a really good article out there, so hopefully this could really clear up some FUD. Again, you'll have a better understanding of the trade of token and how it's going to benefit XDC. Uh, so let's uh, look into this. So this is a follow-up to the previous articles that he's published on Global Trade Finance. And of course, if you are new to this, if you're not sure where we're going in this whole thing, XDC is the only network that is actually going to be handling trade finance. So listen to this. This article will be an extension of those two, these articles focusing on blockchain and, of course, XDC network. This one is going to be focusing on Trada, the new XRC20 security token on the XDC network backed by trade finance assets. So right here, Trade Tech officially announced Trada, the first ever fully regulated trade finance backed fungible security token. Recently, note that Trada will be a XRC20 token on the XDC network. Get that. So it's a it's a token, a XRC20 token. <laughs> Built on the XDC network right there. So Trada will be offered by a new entity called XDC Tech AG, which has been approved by Liechtenstein Financial Market Authority as a wholly owned subsidiary of Trade Tech Limited. I wanted to take a little time to write up my thoughts on Trada, how I think Trada will function and what I think Trada means for the XDC network. The following represents my own individual perspective as an XDC community member and does not reflect the official stance of the XDC Foundation. Excuse me. Trade finance fuels cross-border trade and trade finance assets, while typically difficult to access, are seen as low-risk investments. Quoting an article from February 2022 in Forbes, default rates for trade finance products from 08 to 2018 averaged 0.36% for importer letters of credit, export loans, and all that according to a 2019 report from the ICC. The low risk involved with trade finance 
makes owning trade finance assets a great way to diversify investments. Historically, the lack of liquidity in trade finance assets paired with the duration risk have made it difficult for non-institutional investors to gain access. Trade Tech aims to open this asset class up to retail investors, allowing retail to take advantage of the low risk diversification that trade finance assets offer while addressing the liquidity and duration risks by issuing trade through a legal entity called XDC Tech. All right. So Trada is a security token, which means that Trada can only be purchased by qualified investors. A qualified investor will go to Trade Tech's XDC Tech's website, which offers a easy to use dashboard. You go through the KYC process, which is important because there are jurisdictional regulations around who can purchase the security tokens. So as part of the prospectus, which states the securities which have been issued are offered to the public in Liechtenstein, Germany, uh, Czech, Denmark, all that in the Netherlands. Upon passing the KYC process, the qualified investor will be will either be able to purchase Trada in XDC through linking their XDC pay wallet to the dashboard or a different payment option as to buy with fiat. During the offer period, the issuer will offer and sell Trada tokens at the subscription price, which is a dollar per token, the subscription price, with a minimum acquisition amount of 100 Trada. No maximum is set. All right. So again, because Trada is a security token, XDC Tech can't just send Trada to the user's XDC Pay account. The Trada has to be custodied on behalf of the investor via an institutional grade custodian like Trustology. Okay. This is for institutional investors. Now, if you take a look at the key information document for Trader, you'll see that XDC Tech AG has approval, has the approval to sell Trader tokens where each Trader represents an interest in an up to $5 million USD note. Assuming that Trade Tech is able to sell $5 million worth of USD, $5 million worth of Trader, through XDC Tech during this initial offering to qualified investors, XDC Tech will then take the proceeds and use them to purchase trade finance assets like invoices. OK, moving forward a little bit here, Trade Tech could serve as a factoring company and use the five million uh, of that of that capital raised through the initial offering to purchase invoices at a discount. As those invoices are paid in full, the difference between the discounted invoice and the full price would be the yield that is passed on to the trader holder. This may be an oversimplification of the process, but I think it paints a potential bigger picture. Currently, there is there is not a secondary market for trader tokens, but according to the XDC Tech white paper, it is the intention of the XDC Tech to list the tokens at one or more Specialized crypto exchanges. Traded tokens can be traded freely either over the counter or via crypto exchanges. Once the tokens have been listed, payments will be made to the addresses that hold the traded token, and these addresses must be KYC'd and whitelisted with XDC Tech because Trader is a security token. Long term, the goal is to get as much get as much trade finance on the XDC network as possible. OK, let me say that again. Long term, the goal is to get as much trade finance on the XDC network as possible. Today, we cannot predict the exact role that the XDC token will play in these trade finance dApps. But I speculate that these dApps will become a huge source of demand for the XDC token, which will encourage the creation of a secondary ecosystem of lending, borrowing, pooling that will have a competitive advantage over DeFi on other chains simply because the XDC network has a ride that no other blockchain amusement park has. This is step two of the marathon, but we're moving forward. And the cool thing about exponential growth is that it starts off gradual, but takes off suddenly. So a really, really good uh, article by the guy Walter. Good stuff. I'll leave you all a link. Last but not least, though, for my XRP holders, Mike Branch had asked, does anybody have a screenshot of the 9000? OK. 9,000 uh, XRP price glitch. Send it to me. Zanin said, I have the video. Y'all look at that. Look at that. XRP just flexed. 9,866. Back to 21. Glitch. Uh-huh. Right. 
But look, I appreciate you making it to this part of the video. Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe, and as well hit the bell so you don't miss out on any of these updates. But I'll holler at you later. Peace.